Hey, survivors, Zed Files here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about your HLNA companion and the new Genesis features, the missions, and the hexagon currency. So first of all, I'll explain what HLNA does. HLNA is the first thing you see and hear when you log into Arc Genesis for the first time. She tells you a bit of information about the Genesis simulation, the different biomes, and the missions, and a little shop. After that, HLNA will help you with getting around, buying items, and give you information about the story of Ark. To access most of these features, quickly look to your side, and you'll see her floating around. Then hold down the button it's telling you to hold down, on PC it's E, and it'll bring up her radial menu. From here you have four things you can go into. First, biome teleportation, which you can use to teleport to a different biome, or just a different part of the biome that you're already in. There's the bog biome, the arctic biome, the ocean biome, the volcanic biome, and lastly, the lunar biome. And each biome has eight different regions you can teleport to. The second thing from HLNA's radio menu is arrival protocol. You'll only need to use this when you're almost finished Genesis and ready to verse the final boss. The third thing is HLNA settings. From here you can show mission boundaries. Most of the time you can't build in mission boundaries, so the main use of this is telling you where you can and can't build. I'll give more info on this later on. You can set HLNA's verbosity. There's three levels of verbosity. Level 1 is she'll only talk when needed. Level 2 is she'll talk when needed and sometimes say random things. And level 3 is she'll be talking as much as she wants. Next to those levels are subtitle settings, basically just the same settings as the normal verbosity controls, but focusing on the subtitles. There's also a bonus level where you can completely disable the subtitles. And then her additional frequency settings. Here you can disable and enable some specific things about HLNA, like useless reaction lines, movement sounds, and emote reactions. Emote reactions are, whenever you do an emote, she'll match it with her own little image. So going back to HLNA settings, the third option you can choose is set compact mode. This just makes HLNA go invisible and only appear when there's a critical alert. If you want to make her show herself again, go into your whistle wheel and click on the show HLNA button. Now, going back to HLNA's main radial menu, the fourth thing is exchange hexagons, which takes you to her shop. Here you can buy resources, food, cryopods, and loot crates, which are basically just the loot drops of Genesis. In order to buy anything, you need hexagons. So now, I'll cover what hexagons are. Hexagons are the currency of Arc Genesis. You can use them to purchase things from HLNA's shop, and you can earn them in three ways. One, just saying hello to HLNA every once in a while, which will earn you 300 hexagons. Two, fixing up a glitch on the map. Glitches are basically the explorer notes of Genesis. They are vertical purple lights that make things near them look distorted. Holding down the button it tells you to hold down will patch the glitch up and it gives you an experience buff and 1000 hexagons. And then instead of bringing up a note of a past survivor like with explorer notes, HLNA will instead tell you about what caused the glitch or just some random thing she thought about. The third and final way to earn hexagons is from completing missions. You can access your list of missions by going into your inventory, then clicking on the missions list button listed in between your explorer notes button and your hexagon amount. In the left box, there's all your different missions. There are six different categories of missions, one for each biome and then just all of the biomes together. You can also search within a category for a specific mission and choose one of the two sorting orders. Sort by distance, so the closest mission is listed at the top, and then sort alphabetically. Then below all of that, there's your actual missions. To the right of the mission name, there's your distance away from the mission, and the amount of people that can participate in this mission. To the left of the mission name, is the level of difficulty of the mission. Every mission has three difficulties, Gamma, Beta, and Alpha. The higher the difficulty, the more hexagons you'll be rewarded with. In the right box, you get information on the mission that you are currently browsing. It tells you what you have to do in the mission, your best score, your reward, 
on the leaderboard with other players' best scores. Missions can vary from things like throwing dodos into basket hoops, to challenging things like hunting down a raptor pack, or battling the giant underwater motor boss. Repairing all the glitches in a biome counts as a mission accomplished, and there are also missions that are just for having fun with friends. Once you've found a mission you'd like to try, click on the track mission button in the top right corner of the right box, close inventory, and then follow the little exclamation mark. Once you arrive at the exclamation mark, you'll see a console. You can hold down on it to start the mission. These consoles can also have more than one different mission connected to them. Next, you can choose one of the three difficulties for the mission you want to start. Another thing you can do at the consoles is access its inventory, and its inventory is basically just the inventory of an obelisk. Once you start your mission, try your best to successfully complete it and earn yourself some juicy hexagons, as well as some extra items and blueprints. Nothing bad will happen if you lose, you can just try again sooner or later, but if you got yourself killed on your mission, you will have to go get your stuff back. Besides getting hexagons, items, and having fun on your missions, you also need to complete them in order to challenge the final boss of Genesis, the Master Control. Well, we are now at the end of this video, the last Genesis guide video from me. If you want to watch the other 5 guides I made, click on the linked playlist in the top right corner. From now on I'll be making creature comparison videos, where I'll compare the Genesis creatures to similar non-Genesis creatures, so if you aren't already, make sure to be subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss those. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.